How do you plan your school week when you use the Robinson curriculum? The answer might surprise you, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Karen and we like to talk about sustainable homeschooling. So the Robinson curriculum, in my opinion, is just such a fantastic way to homeschool for the long haul. It really is sustainable. It focuses on the three R's. And when it comes to planning, well, there's really nothing to plan. So the way that it works is with math, they go through their, it's recommended they use Saxon math, but if you wanna use a different math program, I would recommend you just use something that is sort of the same format where it's incremental development with continual review, but something that they could do independently on their own. So you are not the math teacher. They are reading it or they're watching it, whatever, but they are learning they are doing the problems they are either correcting themselves or the system corrects it so it totally takes it off your plate so when it comes to planning every week for math there's nothing to plan they're just going to continue with their course or if they're you know doing something like saxon math if they're ha having a high failure rate like error rate not failure rate high error rate then they know they need to redo the lesson the next day. Perhaps they self-regulate and they know I should slow down and just do 15 problems the next day, but they're just going to continue down that book, that course, that path, whatever it is with math. So then when it comes to writing with RC, they just write every single day. Front and back, double space so that you can give the, your feedback. They just write every day about whatever they want to write about. They give it to you and you do you give them their feedback? Maybe it's capitalization, punctuation, or you're noticing spelling mistakes, and then whatever approach you want to take. I add little things like every misspelled word, maybe they write it 10 times each, or they put it on a little cheat sheet for themselves so they never guess how to spell that word again. But that's it. They just write every single day. So when it comes to planning, there's nothing to plan. Just give them a notebook. I also give them some other little tools like I'll show you here. This is a great little spelling dictionary. It's not overwhelming like a big dictionary and that really helps cut down also on spelling mistakes. A good speller never guesses. So you're just trying to help them to not have to guess. And then when it comes to reading, they simply read every day. So the Robinson curriculum already does this for you. They have a fantastic list great classics on their great reading material the more they read the list the more their spelling their writing will improve and they just pick up where they left off the day before so they just continue down the list the list increases in difficulty you don't have to uh, see what level they're on or anything they start at the beginning with the McGuffey's primer and then it keeps going, increasing in difficulty all the way to Shakespeare, you know, um, Paradise Lost and Regain, you know, books like that. They just continue on that list. So again, there's nothing to plan. They just pick up the book that they left off and read a couple chapters or read for a couple hours, however you wanna work that out. I have a whole video explaining how I approach RC reading time. I will link it down below. Now, because the way that we homeschool is so different, there was never a homeschool planner that really worked for us. So I went ahead and created one. This is the RC homeschool planner and this is undated and it's really used for you to have some sort of record keeping because that's something that parents ask me all the time. How can you keep records? with this because admittedly there isn't really a paper trail there aside from the math notebooks that they're using the notebooks that they're using for writing the, there's not really anything that has like an agenda or a checklist so that's why I created this and how it works is that yes each month there is a little monthly planner layout where you can write any field trips you're doing, any days off you're taking, vacation, holidays, things like that. I have a little section here with goals, but then here is the checklist. And so with this checklist, it has here Bible, morning time, chores, Saxon math, math facts, daily writing, vocabulary, reading, phonics, and read aloud. So all I simply do is just every day, just check off that we did that check off that we did our bible time that the kids did their chores i check off that they did their saxon math or if they're younger that they worked on their math facts that they did their daily writing and that's it so at least it just gives a record like we did it for that day and it's just a check mark it's so easy you don't have to fill anything in just a check mark there are some weekly spread pages as well 
And if you want to keep track of maybe younger kids, what math facts they're working on or where you're at with alpha phonics. If you're maybe switching back and forth some, with somebody else doing the lessons, they can see where you left off. And I also like to add maybe Bible verses and what our read aloud is. So I like to read aloud in the evening. So I'd like to keep track, you know, where we're at and what we're reading. Just, just for a little record keeping. And that's it. So that is the RC homeschool planner. I will leave a link for it down below. You can purchase this on Amazon and you can also download a free PDF version if you are a member of the schoolhouse. So that's my monthly membership site. There you can have access to all of my courses as well as weekly live Q and A's. And there is a freebie folder there and you can get a digital file of this and you can upload that to GoodNotes and you could just, again, electronically just uh, keep track and just do a check off. So it's just really easy. It gives you a way to have some sort of record, even though there's really nothing that you have to write out and plan, which is wonderful and it's very sustainable. Now, another recommendation or tip here is to keep track of the books that they're reading with the RC book list. You could just print out one of these sheets, one of these logs from the um, RC online extras. You could kind of write down the date of when they start and maybe when they finish, if you wanna keep track of how long it takes them to read a book. And if you're skipping a book, maybe you can cross it out and write whatever you, um, you swapped it out with. But also I created this uh, book journal, record keeping journal. So if you're not doing all of the RC books or you're modifying the list or just if you're adding in other things or you wanna include your read alouds, uh, you could use this journal. There's two of them. The smaller one is meant for younger kids because it has a place for them to draw. And then the bigger one is meant for older kids because it's just a page of writing. And so they can keep track. It has enough space for a hundred books here. And so they can write the title when they finish the book and then kind of share their thoughts, write the book title, author, subject, setting, and then notes. I have them just write, you know, did they like it? Did they not like it? What did they like about it? What they didn't, what they recommended to a friend, you know, so nothing really super formal. I want to keep it so that they just enjoy doing this. They enjoy reading. They enjoy writing. And so, yeah, that's just one other way of how these are just special to me. I have a whole video on this, why I just really treasure these over the years, seeing their thoughts when they were younger about the books that I've read out loud to them or the books that I had them read. So these are special to me just on another level, but they're also really great just to have, you know, some sort of record keeping of the books that they're reading. And then the chart is also very handy as well. Now I will add that the only thing that I really like to sort of plan at the beginning of the week or I do this Sunday night, I just go through my bookshelves and I pick out some books that I want to read aloud, like some uh, picture books for the younger kids or anything in particular that stands out to me. I pick it out and I leave it on um, the coffee table to read throughout the week. I also do this with board games. I'll go through the board game closet and I'll pick out maybe a geography game or a special just, or a fun game or a charades game. And I'll pick those out and put them in the living room as well. Out of sight, out of mind. And even when you have a lot of books or a lot of games, if you don't see them, you'll forget about them. So that's my way of being intentional during the week is just kind of picking out, you know, that's how I plan. I just pick out the, the fun things that we wanna do during the week. And so that's it. I will leave some helpful links down below. That's how we plan using RC. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Now, I think you would really like this video, but YouTube's algorithm thinks you would like this video instead. So whichever one you choose, I will see you there. Bye for now.